Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Aaron Nikos, who is Director of Preventive Cardiology at the John Hobson School of Medicine, Director of the Impact Center at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, and she's the co-editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Preventive Cardiology. And I cannot think of anybody better than you to talk about the association between how menopause can impact heart disease, cardiovascular risk, if you will, in women. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me on your program. So a lot of women um, who are going through menopause, and all women will go through menopause, don't necessarily see the association between menopause as perhaps an additional risk factor that perhaps can influence your cardiac risks. So talk to us a little bit about that. How does menopause figure in that's, you know, different than smoking <coughs> or diabetic or cholesterol or whatever? Yeah, so cardiovascular disease, unfortunately, is the still leading cause of death in women, and that includes heart attacks and strokes. And it's actually um, rates have been on the rise in younger women, middle age who are age 45 to 64, um, actually have the fastest growing rates of cardiovascular disease. And so in addition to the traditional risk factors you might know about, like blood cholesterol, blood pressure, glucose, smoking, we know that there's also female specific risk factors that can put a woman into a higher risk category that may be potentially at risk of cardiovascular disease. And so one of those risk factors is going through menopause early, uh, before the age of 45 is considered early or before the age of 40 is considered premature. And the earlier onset of menopause does put a woman into a higher risk category where we might need to be thinking about um, doing some additional tests to assess her cardiovascular risk. Okay, so, you know, all women experience hot flashes, but they don't experience them the same. Some women experience hot flashes even before they lose their menstrual cycles. Some have uh, cycles that continue and, and continue hot flashes, and then they're in menopause without menstrual cycles and their, their hot flashes may go away. Other women have horrific hot flashes, both in terms of frequency and severity. Different ethnic populations, hot flashes will last even longer. So is there a relationship between how we experience these hot flashes and night sweats and cardiovascular risk? Yeah, so many you know doctors as well as patients don't realize that there is a link between vasomotor symptoms, also known as hot flashes, and increased cardiovascular disease risk. When the vasomotor symptoms are more frequent, there's been studies suggesting that women who have more than six episodes in a two-week period might be at higher risk, or when they're more persistent, when they're occurring going on for years, you know, more than five years um, since their onset. Um, this has also been associated with increased cardiovascular risk. Now, associations don't mean necessarily causation. It doesn't mean that the hot flash is directly causing the cardiovascular risk. It just might be a marker of a woman who has other risk factors that put her at increased risk. And so we'd really want to be more attentive about this woman's heart health and, and check all of her other risk factors, including, you know, her blood lipids and her blood pressure uh, and doing maybe some additional testing to see if she's at higher cardiovascular risk. So if I'm a woman who has my menopause before age 40, or if I'm a woman that has menopause before age 45, but I, I don't have that terrible hot flashes and I seem to be coping, does it really matter than if I had, for example, my menopause in my mid fifties, like most women do? Well, there, you know, having the early menopause is a strong marker of increased cardiovascular risk, you know, from the loss of estradiol. So it does put a woman into a higher risk category. So these are the kind of patients I like to see with preventive cardiology assessment. Um, our guidelines for prevention say that if a woman has other cardiovascular risk factors that put her at higher risk, having an early uh, menopause, we call that a risk enhancer. So it puts her into an even higher risk category, or we might start thinking about preventive of therapies such as statin medications, 
But sometimes the risk is not certain, you know, uh, there can be a lot of heterogeneity about risk. And so often when I'm seeing a patient in my uh, clinic and we're not really sure about her cardiovascular risk, but she has that early menopause history, I might do a test called a coronary calcium score, which is a test done by a, a non-contrast CT, a, a very low radiation protocol, but it's looking for um, calcium as a marker of that plaque, that atherosclerosis in the arteries that would be a sign that the woman, you know, does have a disease in her arteries that would warrant preventive treatment, such as with statin medications. So if I'm a young woman who's managing my hot flashes, but yet I, I lose my periods, let's say by 39 or 40, is it different starting me on a hormone therapy compared to a woman in her 50s? Is it more important because I've lost my estrogen maybe 10 whole years earlier than, you know, someone else might? Yeah, so if the woman is at lower risk, meaning she doesn't have cardiovascular disease, we generally uh, do want to treat until the average age of natural menopause to at least, you know, age 51, because she's lost that hormones earlier um, for, for bone protection and, and other reasons. Um, you know, we don't have to uh, avoid uh, menopausal hormone therapy in all women, especially if they're having a lot of symptoms, uh, uh, vasomotor symptoms, that it can be very safe in women who are at low cardiovascular risk. Um, and that's where a risk assessment is so important to, to, you know, measure blood pressure and lipids and take a family history and assess for smoking and kind of assess, is this a, a person that is at higher cardiovascular risk or at low cardiovascular risk? And at low cardiovascular risk, menopausal hormone therapy can be, you know, very, very safe. I think, you know, part of the message that I think you're giving for women in general is, is that if you've not taken care of your heart health, and your changes uh, are happening in terms of your cycle and menopause, this too could be an enhancer. And it's really a great time to go and seek some care, either to discuss cardiovascular health and the relationship to menopause and hormones. Um, it, it, you know, we are not discreet. The menopause is not discreet from cardiovascular disease. Right. And because there's a lot of changes that uh, happen to cardiovascular risk factors at the menopause transition. So with the loss of estrogen, um, a woman's um, cholesterol panel can change. She can have an increase in the LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, an increase in triglycerides, a, a lowering level of HDL. So many women who see me, they always tell me, oh, their cholesterol had always been, you know, normal. Right. And then now it's high and they are surprised. But, but that is well known that the lipids in particular, do change um, and go up at the menopause transition. Additionally, um, women start depositing fat differently. They deposit a uh, fat more in the, the abdomen cavity and that, yeah. that visceral fat is a uh, 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 increased risk for cardiovascular disease. It can make women uh, more resistant to insulin, uh, more likely to have prediabetes or diabetes. And so these shifts in uh, fat distribution uh, and lipids, as well as uh, some women's uh, blood pressures can increase because there can be increased sympathetic tone. Uh, there's a lot of changes that happen. And so the menopause transition is actually a really good time if one hasn't already to, to get a, a preventive cardiovascular checkup. I'm starting with primary care doctors can initiate this by starting with the traditional risk factors uh, can be done through one's primary care doctor. Uh, but if a woman's found to have risk factors or particularly if she has a strong family history, it uh, might be a good idea to, to see someone like you know me, a preventive cardiologist. Well, thank you so much for joining us and really highlighting to women the importance of really looking at us from a holistic point of view. And yes, those changes that women say, you know, my weight is the same, but it's redistributed in different mm -hmm. ways. It's not just the way you look, but how in fact it may be influencing your cardiovascular risk. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's good talking with you.